Panamax is a game for two to four players about running a shipping company that ships goods through the Panama Canal. If you're looking for a game that bridges the gap between theme and mechanic, Panamax might be a game you want to check out. It's published by Stronghold Games and designed by these three gentlemen whose names I'm not even going to attempt to say. In Panamax, like I said, you and your fellow players are owners of shipping companies. You each own your own shipping company and you're basically the CEO. And you have to manage the assets of your shipping company and your own personal money, which this is important because at the end of the game, the winner is the one with the most money personally. Not in their company, but like actually their own money. And so getting money requires you to play with stocks. So this game has a stock element, it's an economy game, and you're also managing the resources and contracts of your shipping goods, which you are putting on your boats. I'm sorry, they're ships, but I'm gonna call them boats because boats is a cooler word. So at the start of the game, you start with company finances and personal finances. Then you're gonna pick up contract cards. When you pick up contract cards, those contract cards, uh, you allocate dice to them. There is a lot of dice in Panamax. You roll dice like, three times total and that's only to determine what base actions are out for people to pick from because it's an action selection game which you could kind of equate to like worker selection but yeah anyway depending on the action that you took when you selected that contract you load those cargo boxes onto boats when you load cargo boxes onto boats you can't load more than one cargo box onto the same boat in a turn unless you have something that says otherwise as always but this means that if you have three cargo things on this contract and you want to fulfill this contract, you have to depend on other players' boats. So already you're starting to depend on other players because you can't play this game without depending on other players. I just love that. Once you have some cargo on your boats, then you need to move those boats across the canal. You are always moving boats across the canal. So if a contract says load on the China side, you load your boat on the China side. That means your cargo can only go on boats that are in the China dock port area. All right, now you have to get those boats that have your cargo on them across to the other side. Whenever you move boats, there's two types of movements. There's lock movement and waterway movement. And there's little icons all over the board. And whenever you move boats, across those icons, it uses up that type of movement. When you take a movement action, you have to complete all the movement action. So even if you don't have ships that can legally move as far as you need, you have to move other player ships or the military ships that are just out and give you bonuses. But you have to move them. And sometimes you want to move your opponent's ships because maybe they have cargo on them that you need to get through because it's your cargo. Or maybe you want to move their ships so that they feel obligated to move your ships on their turn. It's very much a game where you can bargain and make deals with people. You can also tie yourself to people's ships. If somebody is loading up two of their cargo on one ship, you can put on one of your cargoes because you know they're going to get their cargo through. Might as well put yours on there for a free ride. Ship movement also is very interesting in that ships group up. The locks are so large that they can fit up to four cargo dice, like dice spaces basically. So if you have a ship in a lock that is only big enough to hold one die, if another ship comes in and is less than three, three or less, it will group up with that other ship. And now they are grouped up through the entire lock system. Once they clear out through whatever lock system they're currently in and get into like a river or a lake, they ungroup. It's another way that you can also team up with people where you can be like, oh, I'll group my ship up with yours and I'll move them and then you will move them on your turn and we can get our cargo through. So there's a lot of bargaining and like team play even though this is a competitive game. If a ship being pushed in is too large to group up, then it just pushes the ships in front of them through the lock system. And those ships that they're pushing don't have to pay movement cards. Once ships get all the way through the canal, so they're all the way through the locks and they're all the way through the lakes, you get paid. So you get however much money is the pips on the thing. So if it's a three pip die, that means it's a three pip cargo, which means you get three bucks once it makes its way through. There are some modifiers for this. If your dice are on the San Juan Prospector, you get to pick one of the dice and you get to multiply it. If it's on a cruise ship, a passenger ship, which there are some of, you actually don't get money, you get these little tokens, which translate to money. Also, if you get military through, you don't get any bonuses, but whenever you use any military ships, you get some personal money according to your bingo chart, which is something I haven't gone over at all. Bingo board. It's very important to the game. It's very crucial. It's a lot of fun. I'm going to stop talking about it. If you own one of the boats that made it all the way through the Panama Canal, you do get a bonus, and that is the form of either a captain card, a stevedore card, or a finance advisor card. Uh, and those
those grant you different bonuses. Do we have and binoculars? You may or may not take the contract. Maybe in the you. camping stuff. I don't oh, think so. I mean, Please don't go digging. digging through the camping stuff. I was just thinking I could have binoculars, a walkie-talkie, and a headset. <laughs> I could be all three. If you had, and, yeah. Oh, and an orange vest. At the end of every round, which there are three of in a game of Panamax, you collect money from the stocks that you have, unless the owners of the companies can't pay out those stocks, in which case nobody gets stocks from that company, but you would collect stocks. You would also uh, figure out turn order, which is there's this whole rail card thing with like the kind of implied trains that I have totally ignored up till now, and I'm just not even going to go into. And then you have to pay fines. So there's little purple boxes all over the board. and if and that purple box tells you how much you have to pay per die in that box. If you have dice anywhere on the board except for the dice pool, you have to pay a fine. Oh, and if you have dice on contract cards, you have to pay a fine. Basically, you don't want dice anywhere except for the dice pool or lakes, but you still have to pay a fine for lakes. If I seem slightly exasperated throughout this review, it's because Panamax is a heavy game. It is a brain burner game, and trying to explain the game without going into too much detail in like a quick review format is pretty difficult, but the, uh, I still am trying to make an effort to do it because Panamax is a very good game. I really like Panamax. Yes, it takes a while to teach, yes, there's a lot going on, but that doesn't mean it's very complicated. Once you know how to play Panamax, like halfway through the first round, not even halfway through the first round, by your second turn, you will understand what's going on. You will know what you need to do, and you will remember all these things. You will know how to load cargo onto your ships, you will know how to move ships, you will know how ships move, and you will know what you need to do to be able to get money into your personal finances, complete your bingo card, and all the other things that you want to do for the end of the game. The rulebook of Panamax, though, on the other hand, is, is just, just not that great. Stuff is in weird locations, facts and information is in weird locations, the flow of it's really weirdly written, the formatting is just like wall of text, it's just, it needs some help. This is a great game for three to four players. Notice I didn't say two players. While the game is marked for two to four players, I feel that anything less than three players is just not worth it. Because Panamax has so much player interaction involved with the moving of the ships and the loading of the die on the other ships, in a two-player game, because you are competitive with each other, you have very little incentive to try and move each other's ships. This is a great three and four player game. It's simplistic once you learn it. There's so much to do. There's so much strategy. There's enough player interaction that you don't feel sandboxed. And it's just the theme. It's dripping with theme. The mechanic works so well with the theme. They did a fantastic job bridging this gap. If you'd like your own copy of Panamax, check it out at your friendly local game store or on Amazon. Link done in doobly doo. If you like this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, feel free to subscribe. And as always, what have you been playing lately? Also, this is Portland. It's really pretty and awesome and there's lots of good food and if you ever have the chance, come check it out.